life now. Yes, sir. so good. I didn't see the three, two, one. I never see it. It goes too fast. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> I guess I'm too busy dinking around and not paying attention. I should be, huh? So because on our screen it goes three, two, one, and then we're live. He always has to. The Ariel always has to say, "You're alive. We're live. We're live." Because <laughs> he knows I'm not paying attention. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> We compliment each other. Oh, well, I hope so. I'm thankful that you're here a lot. Thank you. Well, anybody, anyway, everybody, anybody, <laughs> let me speak. <laughs> anyway, everybody, we're glad you're here, <laughs> and we're thankful that you're with us today. Um, we're thankful that the Lord is doing great things. Um, Amen. Yeah, we just we just have lots to still pray about. Same stuff. We don't need to go into that today. Just really, it's just the same stuff. And, yeah. and you know... Um, Please don't listen to, please don't listen to all the stuff that that's not true out there. Um, and I don't know, maybe do a little research if you're going to watch. I, I, you know what? I even stopped watching network news. I'm just not going to do it. Um, I'm going to, I'll watch stuff on either side, way on either side, because at least I, I, they tell me exactly where they're coming from. They, they want me to know their opinion, and I get it. But I'm not watching stuff. I, I'm just not going to watch the network news anymore, ever. I just don't believe them. I don't trust them. There's some good ones. Yeah. I'll watch yeah. ones out of the country. There's an Israeli yeah. uh, one. I watch, I watch the Japanese news. <laughs> I do. I do. There are some global ones that I'll watch to get their perspective of how yeah. they're viewing the United States and yeah. what we're going through. Yeah. So. Democracy Now! is a very, very left-leaning conversation, but I like to watch it because... Because it it gives me their point of view, it gives yeah. me what they think, and that's fine. If, if if that and then, you know, I guess I I don't know. If, I don't really know a right leaning news source anymore. I, I guess Fox News is the most is the closest to that, or like a Rush Limbaugh radio program or yeah. something like that. I mean, it's like it's like the both ends of it, and then you can make up your mind yourself with listening to both of those. But it's just it's the things people are saying aren't true. Um, <laughs> And uh, and I just got frustrated. I turned it on for a couple minutes last night. I thought I'm not watching this. So I went back to my original conversation. I'm going to watch network news through this conversation. Um, th there are there are people who do who do um, who calculate who, who calculate what's what's being said and and do fact checks and stuff like that. And if you can you can find those on the internet. Maybe you should just look at that. I don't know. Anyway. So we just need to pray for our country. We need to pray for our president and our, and whoever the president elect is. Right now, it looks like it's Joe Biden, but we need to pray for that person. We need to pray that um, that God's will will be done, and it will. And, and I believe that with all my heart. We need to pray that that the truth is known and and it's out there in the open. Yeah. Um, it, the, the the battle lines are being drawn. It's not it's not as simple. It really isn't. Please don't listen to people tell you that just because one person gets an office or one person doesn't get an office that things are going to be calm and they're not it's it's not that simple P people are not going to be at peace listen let me tell you what peace is we just don't get this concept of peace very well we think peace is truce <laughs> and truce is not the same thing as peace truce is when you don't like each other but you decide not to talk to each other so you don't argue with each other <laughs> truth is when you make nice and play nice but you don't like each other you know that's <laughs> truce right yeah. <laughs> that's truce um we have a lot of peace treaties that are truces truces were is when you wave wave the white flag and said i'm not going to fight anymore but you still have all the emotions and all the hatred and everything else on that's not that's not peace that is not peace Peace comes when righteousness and unrighteousness, when the truth and lies crash into each other and you believe the truth over the lie, then you personally are going to be at peace. And you'll find a collective group of people who will believe that. And when they do, then there will be a community of peace. But that's where peace comes from. It believe it, it, peace comes from the truth of of god the in fact the bible says this it's really interesting it says peace kisses righteousness in the old testament there's an intimacy between righteousness and peace because you cannot have true peace without righteousness so anyway 
Well, just just know that. So if 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 you don't if you think somebody's not telling you the truth, even a little bit, not telling you the truth, then it can't be peace. <laughs> If it's just not right. <laughs> no, it's not. So, so anyway, just just think about that. Anyway, I, so I want to pray for our country because our country is very divided. Seventy-one million now voted for the president. Seventy-five million voted for Joe Biden. So um, that's a lot. That's what they say. Those are the numbers that you're hearing. I don't even know if those are correct, but it's pretty close. I'm sure. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. That's that's a huge turnout for our country. I mean, an, a, a massive turnout for our country. We don't, we've never seen those numbers before ever. Those are those are both numbers are record breaking numbers. And so, what we need to realize is that is that this country is very divided. But look, don't be surprised about that. Don't be surprised that we're so so divided. Why? <laughs> because people don't like Christ. <laughs> You know, it, it really is. It's it's Satan and Satan is 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 doing his best to to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and that's what he's trying to do. But he's not going to make it. He's not going to win this battle because there are too many believers in those numbers of 156,000 people. Excuse me, 156 million people. There's too many Christians in those numbers on both sides. You can be a Christian and be a Democrat or a Christian and be a Republican. I think that's not, that's not what defines your faith. So, But there are numbers on both sides of that, that want people to believe and, and to know the truth. So that's what we're going to pray for. This scripture came to mind when you were talking about peace out of uh -huh. Philippians 4, uh -huh. 6 or 7, which says, this is out of the NLT, and it says, don't worry about anything. Right. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank Him for all that He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. And His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. well, that's my prayer for today. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about anything, but in everything, in everything. pray. Yeah. Pray. Yeah. Pray. Yeah. Pray. Yeah. That's a that's a great that's a great scripture. It's Philippians four. Mm -hmm. Yep. Six yep. through seven. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's one of my favorite scriptures. So just, just yeah, I know Billy. I know it's one of my favorites. <laughs> I have a he lot says that to you. Oh yeah, he goes. Oh, you are, he says that all the time. Yeah, yeah I do. I, just, I, so I quit saying it because he keeps uh -oh. teasing me about it. But it is one of my favorite scriptures. <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. In <laughs> it's Penny's we, birthday today. Who's Penny? Penny Bellsman. Yeah. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Woo. There you go. That's all you get, Penny. We're, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not quite the crooners that you, <laughs> that's not our job to be singing. So happy birthday. Anyway, happy birthday, Penny. Hopefully you're laughing and having fun. And the rest of oh, you are going, oh man, I'm very sorry. I'm, the rest of you are going, thank you, Lord. They didn't sing more. That's good. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> no. We had the harmony of Mr. Uriel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> you, why don't you start? Sure, you want yes. to? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lord, uh, we thank you. We thank you that we can have laughter, Father. Yes, Lord. Um, but look, greater than laughter is your joy. Mm. Lord, that cannot be experienced in this world whatsoever. There's really no word to be said of your joy, but only be experienced <laughs> by the power of your spirit, Lord. And so we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that we can have life today. We thank you for what your son did on the cross. And after the cross, after the resurrection, he was here for 40 days. And we've been talking how Peter speaks of this, Father, the power of Christ. Yes, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, in that same power, Lord, that we have direct access to you because of Christ. That is, as we proclaim as, our, as Christ as our Lord and Savior. And so, Lord, I pray today. And what I've just, the, the Philippians for that, Lord, we don't worry about anything. We don't worry about the elections. We don't worry about the results, Lord, because ultimately your will is going to be done. But you call us to pray about everything, Lord. And Lord, there's something Jesus. wonderful that when we can tell you what we need and thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord, as we, we saw this in Acts 2, where people began to praise you for your wondrous deeds. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Lord, when we get to that place, Lord, uh, we can make, truly experience your peace, as Rick described, which, Lord, which exceeds anything we can understand. And so, I, Lord, we pray that your peace would guard our hearts and minds as we live in Christ, Lord. And um, I thank you for today, as I know today is Veterans Day. We thank you for all that serve, Lord, and all the different branches. 
We thank you, Lord, that we have that free that freedom. We have democracy, Lord. We, we live in a nation, Lord, that we're, we, ha we have a right to worship you, to glorify you. And so I thank you for all those that have served, Father. And I would just pray as we uh, dive into your word, Lord, let it speak to us. Let us just learn from it. Anything that we need to learn, of course, there's always something there for us to learn and apply to our lives. And but I just pray for uh, our people who are here at Las Palmas. Lord, I pray for those in our in our county, our children, our youth, our state, um, our elderly, Father, our nation. Today, let it just be a day, Father. Mm -hmm. I plead this by the blood of Christ, Lord, for those that wherever they're at, um, that you bring a peace, Lord, <coughs> you know, to their soul, bring a peace, Lord, to their body. For those who may be struggling physically, mentally, Lord, please, I pray today, Lord, that you have your way today with them. I pray this in the name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we are grateful to be able to spend a few minutes today in your word. And we pray, Lord God, that your word would not return void. We pray that from scripture, Lord, so we know that it won't. We pray that your will be done on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. And you taught us how to pray that, Lord. You said, pray this, so we are. We're praying that. And so, Father, we come to you today. We come to you with, with heavy hearts for things that are difficult for us and we come to you Lord Jesus with grateful and joyful spirits because you have done so much for us and you have brought us so many wonderful things in our life you have blessed us in ways that we cannot even that we cannot even express our gratitude for because they are so great and Lord but we just want to our gratitude would not <laughs> not even be adequate Lord Jesus but it but all we have is that so we come to you and we say lord god thank you for all you've done for us thank you for dying on a cross thank you for taking our sin thank you for forgiving us thank you for paying the penalty my penalty thank you lord god for everything that you have done thank you jesus for bringing us miracles in our life for bringing us things that do bring us to an amazement attitude mm. Thank you, Lord God, for doing all of those things. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you for, for giving us calm in the middle of the storm. And thank you sometimes yes, for calming the storm itself. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all those things. We thank you for the ministry of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving us the paraclete, the one who would come alongside of us and do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father, for those of us who are privileged to be born in this country and those of us who have been privileged to to come and become citizens of this country lord thank you father for for that opportunity thank you for the united states of america thank you for every vet every veteran lord jesus that has that has put their life in harm's way so that we might have the freedom to to speak this way today without fear of retribution we are so grateful lord god for all you have done we're so grateful for all you give us we're so grateful for everything that you put in our way we ask your Holy Spirit's presence today to move in our life. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to move in our life. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to move in our life. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would pour on us, that Jesus, you would pour your spirit on us right now. Thank you, Jesus, that we might share the word of God and the word of God might become absolutely important and, uh, and it might be the word that would change our lives. Thank you for the power of the living word of God. Make, make it, Lord Jesus, make it transformational for us today. We love you, God. We praise you. We give you the, the prayer requests that we've prayed for the last few weeks. We give them to you again. Yes, and Lord. we ask, God, that you would be with those people that need our, our prayers and that ask for our prayers. And we pray that you would take care of every one of those situations. Thank you again, Father, for letting us come today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we are, we are um, celebrating Veterans Day today. I, 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 I thought we celebrated Veterans Day on a Monday. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at the calendar. Yeah, I don't know what happened. You know, I mean, it's, for it me, it changes every day. Oh, it does every year. Years, yeah, every year, it just changes. Oh, this wow. year it skipped the day because we had a leap year. Oh, so okay. It bypassed Tuesday, went to Wednesday. I didn't. I guess I didn't realize. That. I didn't know we, that either. I thought we always, you know. That was always a Monday. Yeah, me too. But I guess not. But that's not the way it is, huh? No, I looked back a couple of years, <laughs> and I was like, huh. Well, that would not be the first time I was wrong. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, listen, all of you who are veterans, or if you know a veteran today, I hope that you'll tell them thank you for what uh, what they've done. We do appreciate veterans today. Yes. And we appreciate we appreciate the freedom that we have in this country. Um, we do have a peaceful transfer of power in this country, and that's a wonderful thing. Now, some of you may think it doesn't look very peaceful now, but, you know, we've had election conversations before in our history that have taken us uh, taken us a little time to figure all out, and and we have dates by which people have to certify elections and all yeah. that stuff, so don't worry. We're well within the realm of those things. And, and President... The president, the new president, doesn't take their new office until January 20th anyway. So, I mean, you know, nothing's going to happen until then anyway. So um, we just pray that, that good things take place. I, I know that people are concerned about the transfer of power, and I know people are concerned about the way these these administrations are having conversations and all of those things. But you know what? That's It's going to be fine. <laughs> It'll work out just fine. you got to remember they're not in control anyway, even though they think they are. Yeah, and uh, cheaters never win, and winners never cheat. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> I used to be, I used to, they used to tell me that all the time in in uh, in, uh, in sports. Cheaters never win, and winners never cheat. So uh, I don't know if that's Kinda true, but I don't know if that's <laughs> true or not. But now, dude. We wish it were true. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was true back then. We just we just wanted it to be. So yeah. anyway, so we're just going to pray that God does His thing, and and the truth of the matter is full force for us. Let's get to the word. We are on, still in the second chapter of Acts. The second chapter of Acts is full, 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 full pretty long of thing. information yeah. for us. Yeah, it is. We're almost to the end. We should get to the third chapter today. We're we're at this place in the second chapter of Acts where Peter has just, just finished preaching his sermon. And it's a wonderful sermon. And you saw the lineal, the lineal, the lineal way in which he presented it. It's like a straight line. And he said, he talked about the death and resurrection, the death and resurrection, the death and resurrection. And he starts out his address by talking about Joel. And he says in the, in the, in the Old Testament prophecy of Joel, these things are going to happen when the Holy Spirit is poured out upon you. So he starts there. And then he says, he says, Jesus of Nazareth was a man that you put to death. He tells the people there that you put to death. You nailed him on the cross. You did all of those things. And then he says, but he didn't, that was not where he left his life, was at, in a place of death. And he, then he quotes what's going on, and then he quotes David from Psalm 16. And he says, David says that he will not rot, he will not decay. So he says, look, I'm just using this, I'm using this scripture, Old Testament scripture, as a guide to tell you that Jesus was not going to decay. He's going to be raised from the dead. And then he goes on in verse 29 and he says, he says, David died and was buried, but Jesus uh, uh, went to the right hand of the Father. Um, he was exalted to the right hand of God, he says. So so your great, our great leader David died, and we, we have his grave here. But Jesus' grave is empty, and he's empty because he was exalted to the right hand of the Father. Then he goes back, and he says, The Lord said to my Lord, which is an Old Testament conversation, Set at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool. So he goes back and he says, look, my Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom you crucified and then was raised from the dead, that person who was prophesied about, that person is, has come alive and he, will, and he will and is now making your enemies your footstool. Why is he saying that? He's saying, listen, Israel, I want you to be assured that God made Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. So that's what he was talking about. So all this conversation about death and resurrection, all the way through that, what we well, this is just a recap, all the way through gets to the place where Jesus is Lord and Messiah, and he talks about that. He wants people to know, know that. Then when they when they heard this, when they heard all of these things, um, it was a wonderful thing because when they heard it, they said, "What should we do?" And he said, "Repent and be baptized." And then and then so he talks to, to them about what that is. So. Jesus Jesus was born, you put him to death, he was raised from the grave, the Old Testament prophesied it, the Holy Spirit was given, he, he, is, he is dead, but he, but he was dead, but he rose from the dead, he is resurrected. Death and resurrection are a key, are the key conversation through these verses so far that we have talked about in chapter 2 of the book of Acts. Death and resurrection. You yeah, this, did it. Yeah, this is ahead. neat that... 
you know, this is not a common way how many people preach nowadays. <laughs> and it really isn't. None of us are that smart. It, it, whether it's smart or not, because Peter was a normal guy like me and you. There was yeah. nothing special about him. Of course, the difference was he was the apostle, one of the apostles they got to see Jesus. But I love how it's just a plain, simple message of the gospel. Lays it out, and that's what that's what it does. That's the power of yeah. the word. The power of the good news of Christ does. Right, right, right. Amen. It, yeah, it's and it's and it's really a very it's a really very if you will read it and just study it and, and unpack it a little bit what you'll discover it's a very very strategic kind of stepping forward this 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 it's it's just a very wonderfully laid out yes. beautifully communicated conversation so anyway it's 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 a really wonderful piece of writing if you'll read it and watch how it just how it just walks through the conversation with Peter. So then, after he does that, after he says, um, you need to repent and be baptized, it says in verse 41, it says, those who accepted his message were baptized, and there were about 3,000 of them, 3,000 men, because that's all they counted that day, there were about 3,000 men that gave their life to Christ. So there there could have been as many as 10,000 at at, with women and children who accepted Christ that day. But, but we do know there were 3,000 men. So then we go to now this 40, I believe it was 42, right? 42nd, yeah, 42nd verse of chapter 2. So that's where we're at today. So they devoted themselves. Now this is what happened after they heard of Christ and believed in Christ. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. So their first, the first, con- all these three thousand people, all of them that had that had come to Christ, all of them that had that had believed the the message of Peter and through the power and the and the prompting of the Holy Spirit in their life, all of them that were drawn and called and said yes to the calling, all of them. This is what this is how they responded. Now I want you to see this. It says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. There are four things there. The the, the, the apostles' teaching, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayer. There are four things that they devoted themselves to. Um, You're looking something up? No. When I was uh, looking at this earlier this morning... One of the things that really caught my eye was they had met there for festivities. So we don't know who these 3,000 were. It could have been local Jews or those that had, that went on the pilgrim, pilgrimage to get to Jerusalem. But the beauty of it here is you see 3,000 people plus whoever it was that came together. Yeah. yeah. I, I think if, if you're looking back at that 3,000 number, that's before the, the four things they devoted themselves to. If you're looking back at that number... It seems to indicate scripturally here because we have the gift of tongues that came upon each of them in their own language. So we have people, I think part of this 3,000 people is is people from all of these different parts of the country. And that's found in chapter 2, verse 8. So if you want to go back to there, I think, let me see if I'm right, it says, then how is it that each of us hears them in our nat- in our nat- nat- native language? Uh, so, uh, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, uh, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Pygia, uh, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, um, Cretans and uh, Cretans and Arabs. So all of these people were amazed because they heard the language and they heard the gospel in their own native tongue. And so part of the 3,000 people is, I believe, is them. They're, they're, they, and the reason I say that is because they devoted themselves to the teachings of the apostles. There was no place else to be taught about Jesus. Yeah. So it was people from all over the known world. I think they stayed there and I think they... I think they got they got teaching that they needed to take it then to their ho- their home countries. Yeah, and what's cool is you see that, and that's the power of the Holy Spirit can only do that to bring people like that. That's the yeah. power of the yeah. gospel that 
I hear Peter talks about, and you have different people from different places just coming together, communing yeah. as the body of Christ. And they were all Jews at this point. They're all Jewish people from those areas. Um, so, so they can't be why because they came to to to, uh, to the festival of Pentecost yep. from all over the world. They were there. We talked about that, and now, now I think they stayed. Now I don't know how long this teaching is. I don't know how long they stayed, but they stayed long enough to learn from all over the known world. They stayed long enough to learn about Christ because it wasn't just that they heard a sermon or two. That's why that word devoted is so important. They devoted yes. themselves to the apostles' teaching. So they they said, okay, so when you devote yourself to something, you 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 are there. Yeah. It's it's a now you're saying I'm giving my life to this. I'm devoting my life to this. So so they they said, now from now on we are going to be those people who who come to a place in our life where we're going to follow Christ, so we're going to listen to these apostles because they're the ones who knew him. They're the ones who were around him. They're, and there's, and, and, and these, these apostles' teachings are not the only thing that they heard. They heard the apostles' teachings, but I think they probably also heard some of the people talk about Jesus in their fellowship times that because there were 120 of them in the upper room when, they, when the Holy Spirit fell. So there was 120 the Holy Spirit fell on and now the Holy Spirit is on these people as well. So the Holy Spirit is the great teacher, but they're learning together. So what did they do? They devoted themselves. Look, if you're a real true believer, you're going to devote yourself to something. Yep. And, 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 and you're going to devote yourself, if you're a true believer, you're going to devote yourself at least to these three, to these four things. One of the words for devotion yep. in the Greek is to continue all time. Yeah, to yeah. To continue all the time in all the place. Time. Yeah, yeah. It's a, I'm there. It's continually doesn't yeah, yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't quit. There, yeah. it's, it's I'm there. Now, it doesn't mean that they stayed there and they didn't go home, but they did for some time. And I don't, I don't know if I know the, the amount of time. Some... I'm sure that did. Did you even read that in there? If they so some commentators said that some actually stayed there and right, lived and lived there. Yeah, and lived yeah. there because yeah. they shared. They shared this common practice of Christianity yeah. that they didn't call Christianity then. Yeah, and so they be you when you read as we get into the right. the, the later verses of chapter two, it gives you an indication that possibly some of them did right, stay. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I think some of them probably did. They devoted themselves, but but that's how the word spread to all those areas. That's how God began his evangelism to the world was through this event. You know, it's kind of ironic. Yeah. I was thinking about this. Uh -huh. You know, a lot of times we send people out, which is nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. We, we, we send them to different countries, different parts here. It was, the, it was the opposite to where they came to a central location, and then they commissioned to go well, out. Well, yeah, but they, but they then were commissioned, but they had to learn something yes, first. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, so, so they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. So what did the apostles teach these people who had just become brand new uh, people of the way? They called it the way, so they were a part of the way. They weren't called Christians yet. They were part of the way. Um, what did what was the teaching? Well, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was because we have an indication of some of this. Look at what Peter taught just in his sermon. Yeah. Okay, that gives you some indication of what they taught. He probably went back to the Old Testament and said Jesus fulfilled all of these these things in the Old Testament. This is what he fulfilled. This is what he fulfilled. This is what he fulfilled. And we see people. Now, when we read the New Testament, we see people doing that same thing. We also have an indication, not just from Peter's sermons, what they were taught, but we have an indication of when we look at when we look at the rest of the New Testament, because a lot of the New Testament was, well, you know, like James wrote, John yes. wrote, <laughs> you know, Matthew wrote, all, uh, um, and they wrote lots of the books. Now, now Paul wrote most of the books of the New Testament that we have, but but a good portion of them were Peter's teachings and James's teachings and the epistles of James and the epistles of Peter. So we know what they taught because they were, they taught, they wrote it down for us. So what they taught them was what we have written down in the Bible. So that's how I really believe that's gives you some indication of the kinds of conversations yes. they had together. Right. Another thing, and this was what, what Christ prayed, which we know about in John fifteen twenty six. he says this, when the helper comes, whom I will send to you he from the Father, that he, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me, and he will testify, uh, 
and you will testify also because you have seen you have been with me from the beginning so that was part of his prayer yes and you see that being fulfilled yeah 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 so there the, the apostles teachings were what we have now in the New Testament yes uh, under the name of the letters to the, the letters of Peter and John and James you know and all of those things so and the Gospels all, so they all of that stuff so they they could have been there a long time what were they learning they were learning about about you know when Jesus <laughs> when the Sermon on the Mount they they had they had learned from that from Jesus and we have that recorded in in the gospel so they learned the sermon on the mount so these people learned the sermon on the mount these people learned uh what we just went through in the book of Matthew these people learned uh, about about trusting Christ these people learned about about the kingdom of God because when Jesus came remember he said when he came back on the 40 days what did he teach them he taught them about the kingdom of God yeah. right so they learned what Jesus had taught them. So, so there's a so everything that you have in the Bible is what they learned. So that's really why in studying the Bible is really important because you have it written down in such a way that you can read it over and over and over again and get it in your spirit. So they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. We should devote. That's the point of all this conversation. If you're really a believer, then you need to devote yourself to the word of God. That's the apostles teaching the word of God. Yeah. That's really what we need to devote ourselves to. That's why that conversation is important. I was talking to someone this morning, earlier this morning that called me and asked me a question about an old Testament story about Abraham and Lot. And this person, I won't tell you their name because of what I'm going to tell you next. They said, yeah, I, I, I'm going to, I'm starting to read the old Testament and I'm going to read through the whole Bible this year. Wow. That's cool. Mm -hmm. You know, they said, we, I've studied the New Testament, but I haven't studied the Old Testament. I'm going to read through all the Old Testament. So I thought, man, that's awesome. It's awesome to be a pastor of people who want to know the word and read the word. It's such a great privilege. So you know who I'm talking to, you, that person. And, and lots of people yes. read through the Bible. But you know who I'm talking to, and I appreciate that very much. And I'm very proud of you. Thank you for doing that. So anyway, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. So we've got that down, right? It's the word of God. It's the things of the word. And, and again, we know, we know what these guys taught by looking to see what Jesus taught them. Yes, and right. when these guys came, I like what you're saying about they had to spend time to teach them. Right. They had gone there to go to the temple because these guys were, you know, they're into Judaism. And right. so, right. not that Judaism was wrong, but here, like we said, the way, I never heard that before. I, th I think I've heard that. It's been a while, but... They devoted to teaching these individuals, you know, here exactly what you have said, what Peter talked about, how Christ taught his disciples. Now they were taking the time to show these people, look, we need to tell you something different. Yeah. Yeah. Than Judaism. Yeah. Yes. What we need to tell you is that Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly. What that, that yeah. Okay. Okay. So the apostles teaching number one, number two, the fellowship and to fe and to and to fellowship. What fellowship? The fellowship of believers. Look, it's well known, it's well known that you become much like the people that you hang out with. Yep. <laughs> Very true. Right. <laughs> so it's true. just known. I mean, I mean not, not not many people would argue with that. Some might, but the reality is that I believe, and I hope that you see the truth in this, that you become like the people that you fellowship with, that you hang out with. And so, what did God want them to do? The Holy Spirit, by the way, this is these aren't things they decided to do themselves. These are things that, again, they were taught to do with Christ. That Christ taught the apostles, the apostles taught, taught them. So these were things that they were taught to do. But it was also it was also this. It was also that they understood that if they were going to devote themselves to Christ they needed to, to learn about each other and they needed to protect each other. There's, there's more in fellowship. Fellowship is not always teaching. Sometimes teaching happens in fellowship. But what is fellowship? Fellowship is living life with someone. Yeah, living life together. Just yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. That's, and that's what it means to yeah. become a disciple of Christ, to live life together with Christ, to let him lead us. And so they would talk about things and they would... They would talk about 
about what Jesus did and they would talk about their own personal lives and they would talk about the difficulties of their lives and they would talk about how hard it was and they would talk about you know what what's going to happen now and, and especially when they saw people being persecuted all around them for what they believed and you know and, and when is Jesus coming he said he was coming back and you know I think he's coming soon and then they would talk about stuff like that the stuff that you and I should be talking about with other people yeah, that's the translation in the Greek. Everything you're saying right now, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's what read it. <laughs> it's all of that. It's yeah. it's all of it. It's you know, it's fellowship, association, community, communion, joint participation. Yeah, you know, so it's it's all that we yeah. just said. So so we have this fellowship, and we have this devotion to teaching, and the Bible tells us here in a minute that they they did this teaching and fellowship in two different places. So they did it publicly and, and privately or from house to house and in the temple. In the temple because it was a big group of people that could hold them and from house to house. The, this is what I think happened. I think they broke off into these little groups and they went from house to house. And there were these little groups. There were over 3,000 people. Yeah. So they, had, they, they were in people's homes. And they would come to those homes and they would fellowship together. They would talk about the Lord together. They would eat together. They would share their aspirations together and their difficulties together, and they would pray for one another. That that's their fellowship. You know, you know what yeah. I thought about the temple was the temple was not just a place of them to fellowship because they still consider themselves Jews, but there yeah. was also their people that they could witness to as well that they would come and just go to that particular, you know. As well, a, I'm sure they told people that. About yeah, Jesus. how cool yeah, is yeah. that? Like you would come well, together. Well, so, then... where, so where do you get the strength to do that? You get the strength from fellowship. Yes. See, that's that's what's so difficult about us today, when we have COVID and we have people telling us we can't meet together. That's why I'm so grateful for this conversation. Yes. I wish we had thousands and thousands on our conversation, to be honest, because not not so that we could say, oh, look how many people we have. But because we need the fellowship, we need the strength that we gather from one another as we fellowship together, even if it's this way. But we really need to get back to fellowship. Yeah, and another thing I thought yeah. about at the temple: what, what kind of people do you find at the temple? Religious people. Yeah. And so it's good when yeah. we gather and we and, and this is fellowship that we're doing online. That you know we're we're we're, we're sharing the word. We're talking through the word. What Billy's doing on Sunday nights, let people be aware of the word. It's ironing, sharpening iron. So when you come across people that are religious or non-religious, you share the truth of God in love. It's, it's kind of neat. It's so important that we do fellowship. Right, right. Yeah, so this, this that's the fellowship. The third thing is to the breaking of bread. So they devoted, see, they devoted themselves. I want you to see this. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings. That's a parenthetical phrase. Do you know what a parenthetical phrase is in, in English? I wish Billy was here. He could explain it to us better. But this is how I view a parenthetical phrase. A parenthetical phrase, if in your mind, think of a little crane. You know, a crane like they build buildings. And the crane has two hooks. And the two hooks come down and they hook a part of the sentence and they take it out of the sentence. And the sentence still makes sense without that phrase in it. That's a parenthetical phrase. Now watch. Watch this. I, I want to read this to you. This is important. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Take out the to the apostles' teaching. Just take it out. They devoted themselves to fellowship. It still makes sense, right? Now take that out. They devoted themselves to the breaking of bread. They devoted themselves to prayer. You see, those are all little parenthetical phrases that you could pull out or put back in to make the sentence. And so those are the four things they devoted themselves to. They just didn't devote themselves to the teaching of the teachings of the apostle and then have fellowship. No, 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 no. They devoted themselves to fellowship. Does that make sense? Yeah. That makes it different, doesn't it? That yeah. makes it completely different. So they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching. They devoted themselves to fellowship. They devoted themselves to the breaking of bread. Now what's the breaking of bread? That's having meals together. That's eating. That's, that's, where you know what I'm just hanging out with you. Yeah, you know. Go ahead. The the NLT they put in parentheses, including the Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's part of it, and I would yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. And and 
because because again, what did they do? They <laughs> they went back and taught what Jesus taught, and Jesus told them to practice the breaking of bread or communion. Yeah. So they did that. That's what they were doing. Now they couldn't do this breaking of bread in in big big groups of people. They had to do it in smaller groups of people. So I think that's a really cool thing. And I want you to see how absolutely um absolutely consistent the Holy Spirit, the Father is. Go all the way back to Exodus, I think it's Exodus 18, where you have Jethro and where you have Moses. And Moses was in trouble <laughs> yeah. because Moses was working from sunup to sundown. He wasn't taking care of his family. He sent his family back to, to Jethro, who was a Midianite priest, because Moses would marry to a Midianite woman. And said, "Take the kids, go away. I, I'm just, I just can't handle this anymore." And he, he kind of, all he's doing is, is just ruining his life. So, so, Mo, so Jethro, the Midianite priest, comes to him and says, "Jethro, what you're doing is not right." And he says, "This is what you need to do. You need to break it down." And basically, if you go through all the scripture, we don't have time to go through it yeah. all. But basically, it breaks down to a one to ten ratio. It's a one to ten ratio. So what happens here is it's the same thing. You break the big group down into smaller smaller pieces so that you can have fellowship and you can do things like eat meals together and break bread together and and you know and and have that intimacy. What happens with with big groups and what happens in small groups? Well, this is what happens. You go to a party for example. You walk into a party and and there's 100 people there. And what you do is you go from one group to one 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 little group to one little group oh, to one thanks. little group. Yeah, they're <laughs> the all little please. they're all little clusters. Right? But but people are moving from yeah. cluster to cluster all evening long and talking to people in all these little clusters, right? You have this big group that folds down into small clusters and they move from cluster to cluster. So there's so and and when you're in a big group for example, like a church service you're looking at the back of somebody's head most of the time and you're paying attention and you're listening and you're receiving to some teaching and, and all of that kind of stuff from in like if you're in the temple you know you're receiving all that kind of stuff but when what happens when you come to a small group what happens when you break bread together and you fellowship with one another what happens is you begin to minister to one another because in a big group even if it's a big party, yeah. so let's it's it. They've broken this down into numbers, eighty plus people, eighty to one hundred and twenty. The, the 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 idea that takes place in there is called social fellowship. The, the principle that happens is the the paradigm that takes place is social fellowship. People are fellowshipping with one hundred and twenty and more is celebration. If you get down to eight to twelve people, what you have is you have intimacy. That begins to happen. What I mean by intimacy is that it's a small enough group where we get together and we eat together and we love it, we're loving on one another. And I feel free and safe in that group yeah. because I've watched everybody. I feel free and safe in that group to say to Uriel, man, Uriel, I'm really hurting with this. Could you pray for me? Or this is happening. Could you pray for me? It's more you know, intimate. Yeah, it's a very intimate. That's the intimate conversation. So, what you're seeing here develop as, as the church is being developed. What you're seeing here develop is this conversation of people devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, larger groups, and to the breaking of bread together, smaller groups, and then they devoted themselves. I think to one of the most important things that we don't devote ourselves too much to anymore. Not, not and, enough that's, of it. and that's to prayer, yeah. right? Yeah, to prayer. They devoted themselves to prayer. Uh, this is prayer together. This is prayer individually. Yes. But how did they know how to pray? How did they know what to pray? Well, Jesus left them a prayer, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Or he left, that's called the Lord's Prayer. That's part of it. Excuse me. He left that 
for the apostles to teach these people. So they probably broke that prayer down. I think they did. And then when they yeah. when they saw him leave to be with the Father. Yeah, he was an alone, example as well, right? An example. Yeah. When they, I think they knew there was some of the do's and don'ts when they know they had failed at the garden. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So yeah. The, I think there was different formats that they saw that they realized, okay, this is what the Lord taught us. And, and what a great model of Christ. You know, it's the ultimate example that we can learn from when you read the scriptures for, right. for us to model our, our lives after. And so right. I, it, it amazes me because, like you said, they didn't have the New Testament per se written yet. But to see this was must have been so radical for them to learn. I think it's, just, it, it's so amazing. <laughs> well, I, I want you to get back to that word devoted because you're yes. right. Now watch. We're going to devote ourselves to something. These people have families left at home. <laughs> These Go back to Jesus' teaching. And what does he say? So it says, if you don't hate your father, your mother, your children, more than, you know, if you don't hate them and follow me, <laughs> uh, don't follow me. Count the cost. Yeah. Basically, that's what he's saying. Now, he's not saying to hate people. What he's saying is this. He's saying, I'm supposed to be the most important thing. He's devoted to him. And you're supposed to be devoted to me. And if you're devoted to me, you're going to be devoted to at least these four things. So that's what it says for us. Um, E.M. Bounds says the greatest the greatest sin in the world, I think it's E.M. Bounds, the greatest sin in the world today is in the United States especially, but in the world is prayer, is in the church, the greatest sin in the church is prayerlessness. Yeah, yeah. That we don't pray. We really don't spend the time in prayer. And we really don't spend the time devoting ourselves. We're not devoted to prayer. See, it's there's a difference between do I pray and am I devoted to prayer. And a, and a good thing here, when, when you do life together, corporately and in your small group, you know, you can pray for one another all the time. You're not just coming in, in times of desperation, but you can praise God, you can thank Him. You know, I, I read a scripture out of Philippians 4, which talks about praise and giving thanks to God. And so that's, it's neat how when you live life together, that you, you have that circle of people of, of, you have an influence in their lives and you just do it together. Right. This is one of the things I had to learn. When we lived in San Diego, me and my wife had this small group, newly married, and we were having issues. We were having communication issues. Uh, we were raised differently. Family of two, family of 12, but we communicated. And when we devoted ourselves to the Lord and then to the small group, there was so much that we learned and they taught us, mm -hmm. you know, into our marriage. And we never thought, because we thought we were the only ones that struggled. <laughs> and that's what you think. Like, we're the only ones. And I don't want to tell anybody because everybody You're else right. looks perfect, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, think yeah, that, yeah, but yeah. then you realize, like, oh, they're just like me. <laughs> they're just as messed up as yes. I am. <laughs> and it makes such a difference. Thank you, Lord, that right. everybody's messed up. <laughs> 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 Look at Peter. Look at yeah. Peter's life. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you begin to realize, like, it, there's such a, a relief. There's just yeah. such a peace yeah. to where when you're devoted... In a small group of people, you're like, oh, thank you, Lord, right. for a family, you know, a church family. Right, right. So, so be devoted to these four things, okay? Be devoted to the teachings of the apostles or to the Word of God. Yes. Be devoted to fellowship. Devote yourself to fellowship. That's a good word. Okay, be devoted to fellowship. Be devoted to breaking bread together and be devoted to prayer devote your life what does it mean to devote it means you read it earlier say it again because that was good it means to stay there always it means don't walk away isn't that what you said earlier yeah, yeah he's either. gonna find it again i don't know how he finds that is it stuff. verse 42 yeah it's verse 42 at the very beginning of verse 42 they devoted themselves anyway so devote yourselves to those things that's a, that's a pattern in your christian life that you can follow yeah, it's, uh, this is what it says, to adhere to one, be his adherent, to be devoted or constant to one, to be steadily... Devoted or what? To be devoted or constant to one. Constant to one, okay. To be steadfastly attentive unto... Steadfastly to, attentive, okay. To give unremitting care to a thing. Unremitting care. So unremitting means I'm not, I'm going to just continue my care with this yeah. thing. Okay. To continue all the time in a place. Okay, yeah. 
to preserve and not to faint. That's oh, a good one. Yeah, yeah. To show oneself courageous for. Okay. To be constant readiness for one. Wait on constantly. Yeah, to be in constant readiness. Wait, wait on it constantly. So that's devoted. Devoted is that I'm, cons I'm constantly in giving my life to these things. And, and, and so these things are things that we should give our life to. We need to devote ourselves to the teaching of the word. That's the apostles' teaching. We need to devote ourselves to fellowship, which is a constant communication with other believers. And we need to devote ourselves, um, excuse me, to the breaking of bread. That's, that's this wonderful, intimate kind of fellowship that we have. And we need to devote ourselves to prayer. Yeah, and I, I like what you said. It's very, very key. Before you can do all of this, you said it. You have to count the cost, be mm -hmm. devoted first to Christ. Well, these people counted the cost. Yeah, and they counted they left the cost. families. They were here for a long yes. time. I don't. I don't think this just happened in a week. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think this. Time. I think this took, took took time to for them to be moved out to their own place. I don't know how long this is. I, you know, some. I don't. I'm sure we can find some commentaries that would give us some. You know what they thought the the length was, but and maybe the Holy Spirit will open it up in the Word as we go through. But these people were devoted to these four things, and I think this is a good pair. A paradigm means a model. I think this is a good model for us to follow as believers in Christ. Yeah, I think of Peter. Okay. Yeah. Peter was devoted yeah. prior to him receiving the Holy Spirit. Right. What did he do? He says, "I'll Christ. I'll never." forsake you, I'll never yeah, abandon yeah. you, right? He was devoted to, to himself, to the flesh. And he even cut somebody's ear off, you know. And here, he comes to receive Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit comes in him. Now he's devoted to Christ, right? He's God, uh, Christ has recommissioned him back <laughs> in. Instead of cutting people physically, now, you know, when he did that to the, the high priest, now... High priest and the servants yeah, here. Yeah. You see him here now. People are cut to the heart, because he's devoted to Christ, he's devoted to, to to Christ first above all things, to his teachings, and you see the power of the Holy Spirit work through Peter. You know, a whole be, whole different person now devoted, you know, to God Himself through Christ, and now He's teaching these people the very thing that we need to learn. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. The next verse says, "All the believers were together, and had everything in common. All the believers." So they they stayed together. They were they were communal in some sense. That means that means they realized that what they had didn't belong to them. It belonged to Christ, and they were giving themselves in such a way. They were devoting themselves in such a way to God that the only thing that really mattered was what mattered to God. Yeah. That's the bottom line of all this stuff. They sold property and possessions to give to everyone who had need. So they were so devoted to this thing. They were so extremely devoted to this, this thing that they called the way and to Christ. Yeah, the, the word awe is talking about a sense of fear of God, just like such reverence to him in the Greek. Yeah, they were they were devoted so much to... <laughs> what, what was I saying? I forgot. It doesn't I'm matter. sorry. No, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Look, why were they glad and why were why were their hearts sincere? Because they didn't own anything. They weren't they weren't possessed by anything yeah. except Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ possessed them. The Holy Spirit possessed them. This is really good. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Watch this, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So look, this is what's this is what's amazing to me. This is what's amazing to me. We got six minutes left. It's amazing to me that they were so devoted that they were willing to sell their property and give it to those who are in need, not spend it on themselves. But the, the, when you're really devoted to Christ. It changes who you are, doesn't it? It, it does. It, it's not about you anymore. You're not the center of all the conversation anymore. It, you know, it's not about me and what I have and what I receive. It's about, it's about God and what He received. They are possessed by God. 
that they are owned. When, when you have a possession, you own it. That's your phone. You own it, right? And you're, it, that yes. phone's possessed by Uriel, right? Uh, you know, this is my coffee. This coffee is mine. I paid for it. <laughs> I possess it. Well, Jesus paid for us. So so I can do it. I could spill this coffee on the ground. I could let it get cold and get moldy. Yeah. I could do whatever I want. It's my coffee. I bought it. It belongs to me, right? But the, So Jesus needs to possess us that way. And we are we should be like that phone or that coffee and say whatever you want, Lord, I'm here. You want my property? It's yours. It's not mine anymore. Anymore, it's yours. Everything belongs to you. And so that's their attitude. And 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 their attitude came. That kind of attitude came that they sold their property. They gave to everyone in need. Um, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. Why did they do it every day? In the temple courts, right? Verse 46. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. So they just didn't go to the temple on the Sabbath. They went every day. Well, they would go three times a day because... To pray, to, for prayer. They yeah. Would at least space the temple. And three. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. three times a day they went. That's a yeah. lot. Yeah. They <laughs> devoted themselves to the temple meeting. So then they broke bread in their homes. So they devoted them. We saw, we saw that they were breaking bread. So this is what they devoted themselves to. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts, or every day, they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Look what they did. Once they devoted themselves, devoted themselves. That, that word keeps coming up over and over here. They devoted themselves. So today I'm, I really want us to think about that. What do we devote ourselves to? What do we give our life to? Really, devoting yourself to something means you give your life to it. What do you give your life to? I know if we're busy and we have kids, it feels like our kids sometimes are the most important thing in our yeah. life. And, they, <laughs> and, and we, devote, we devote all kinds of time to them and all kinds of, you know, and we, <laughs> anyway, sometimes we get way out of bounds with that, right? We devote our life to them. Uh, we devote uh, our life to our jobs. We devote our life to our our spouses, our mates. We devote our life to what else? What else is there? To sports. To sports. To yeah. social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To our hobbies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Different things. And and then we then I think that's an indication to us. The church is pretty anemic. You know what I mean by it? it doesn't have a lot of power. The church is, is, is powerless sometimes because I think the church has devoted itself to too many things that are not what God asks you to devote your life to. Look, God possesses you. He owns you. So you have he no owns right. me. <laughs> I don't have a right to myself. So this, this scripture right here, he devo they devoted themselves is such an important scripture for us yeah. today. I it, think it's good that you say that. Yeah. Because when you're devoted to Christ, you count the cost, you know, and then you realize what he did for you right. on that cross. He was erected and you begin to realize like nothing else matters. Well, if you go back to Peter's sermon, that's why I wanted to talk about it. If yes. you go back to Peter's sermon, what was his linear thought process? Jesus died rose from the dead, and he is the Lord and the Messiah. And if he is the Lord and the Messiah, will you yes. devote yourself to him? That's really what's being, what's being said here in the first few verses as we begin to read the, yes. the book of Acts. We're not even to the third chapter yet, and I it's know. very, very powerful for me. So anyway, um, they sold their possessions, those are property possessions, not just their possessions, not just their clothes or, 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 you know, an extra plow they had around. They sold their property. They sold their homes. So they're devoted to Christ. I mean, they're willing to give up everything. They, they did give up everything. 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 Yeah, yeah. They sold their property and possessions and gave to everyone who had need. Everyone. Even the beggar. Even the guy living in our bus. Oh, man. Lord, forgive us sometimes. I know. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. <laughs> You know, there's a guy that's living in our bus up there. He came to church last Sunday, I guess. I didn't know it was him. I didn't think it was, but Uriel said it was. He he, he dropped by our outdoor service last Sunday. 
man, this kid is a sweet kid, but he's got a drug issue. We yeah. need to pray for him. Lord, help us to minister to him. We need to be devoted to Christ so that, I mean, am I willing, and I'm going to leave with this, am I willing to sell my car so that I can feed that guy if need be? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is a big deal. This is not small. So look, you are his favorite. He died for you. He took your sins. He rose from the grave just for you. And he now stands at the right hand, sits at the right hand of the Father. He now has ascended to the Father. He has taken his rightful place. In the beginning was the word. He's taken his place again. And now he says to you, I love you. And he's calling to us and saying, will you devote yourselves to me? That's what the word says today to me. God bless you. This has been really rich today. You are his favorite. We'll see you tomorrow.